The NFL Draft is done and over, and I am going to be breaking down each and every team and grading out their draft. So check back every day because one team I will do every single day, and I'll have it up here on YouTube for you to watch. We'll go over every prospect that they drafted as well as some key undrafted free agents that they may bring in. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section, and I'll be sure to address them for you. Also, just be aware of my draft grades. No one fails the draft, especially right after it. Even no one in this draft is going to get a D or an F from me because they, everyone had a talent. Everyone did something. So if you think the grades are a little bit high, that's just me not going to too much extremes. And maybe in three or four years, when we look back on this draft, then we can see who really succeeded and who really failed. So sit back, relax, enjoy me as I break down every single team this year. Draft expert Shane Hallam shows off his knowledge. Writing mock drafts, prospects from the best college. Breaking down tape, he might develop a man crush. Tearing up guys, taking questions in a rush. Comparisons, learning lessons. Shane saves the day, oy vey. Hulk or banner, doesn't matter. Listen, cause here's who can play. Alright everyone, today we're going to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles and they had a ton of draft picks. So we're going to have to rip through this pretty quickly to get through them all. In the first round, they traded up and got Brandon Graham, defensive end from Michigan. I do like Brandon Graham more as a 3-4 outside linebacker. I think that was his best fit. He feels more comfortable at linebacker. But as we saw in the Senior Bowl, Brandon Graham can get it done on the ground in his three-point stance. And that's where they're going to play him in Philly. I think he'll rotate in as a rookie, possibly start. We'll see what happens if he can beat out Daryl Taft. This is a guy that can be a sack machine. He's not doesn't have all the physical skills. He's not going to get out and outrun you. But he, he has a bunch of different ways to get past pass blockers. He's very, very good in the run game. I think he's a nice fit for the Philadelphia Eagles defense, so I like that pick. Uh, Nate Allen in the second, safety at USF. Love this pick as well. One of the best center field safeties in this draft. He's just very good at coverage. Doesn't give you much in the way of run support. You know, he can get run over at times. Not the best tackling technique, but he's very good at covering wide receivers, tight ends. He's good at reading and reacting to the ball, making big plays. I like Nate Allen a lot, and I think he's one of those players that he's never going to make a Pro Bowl, he's never going to be a Hall of Famer, but he's always going to add to your team, and you'll see him start for seven, eight years, and just you don't have to worry about that position anymore. And the third, they got Daniel Teo Nishim from Washington, defensive end. This pick I question a little bit. You know, I like the player. He's a high motor player, one of those guys that once again fits the Eagles system, but I thought it was a little bit high for him. I know some people really liked him and had him this high. I personally did not. I he gets taken away from plays a lot. You know, he gets put on his back sometimes. And I just don't like to see that from a third round pick. I would like to see him make a little bit more plays than he did at Washington. So I think that was a slight reach. And the fourth, they took Trevor Lindley, cornerback out of Kentucky. Another reach I felt for the Eagles here. Trevor Lindley, he would have came out last year, maybe been a first or second round pick. There's talk of a first round pick that probably wouldn't have happened when you see the offseason workouts, but he had a terrible terrible season he got beat consistently wasn't fast enough didn't react fast enough he was really exploited this past season and that doesn't hold up in the NFL he played like a seventh round pick this past season whereas two years ago he played like a second round pick and so he ended up going to the fourth I think it's a little high I don't think he's going to give you much more than if you're lucky in nickel corner probably more of a dime guy that you just can bring in when there's a lot of receivers on the field so I, I kind of question that pick as well also in the fourth, they got Keenan Clayton, linebacker out of Oklahoma. Now, I like this pick. I think it still is a little bit high for Keenan Clayton, but he's a guy that was overly productive when he wasn't injured at Oklahoma. Good tackle machine. You know, he's very good at bringing guys down. Uses his body very well to bring down runners and receivers and tight ends. So I think it was a nice pick, and I think he can at least be a very good special teams player, and maybe he can do a little bit more than that for the Eagles as well. So I like that pick in the fourth. Another fourth-round pick, Mike Kafka. Quarterback out of Northwestern. This is a great fit for the Philadelphia Eagles. Look, you let go of Donovan McNabb, you trade him away. You bring in Kevin Comp. Let's hope he can get it done. If he can't, you need someone there that you can develop. Michael Vick isn't that guy. Mike Kafka is that guy. 
He fits that system. A lot of teams had him rated very similarly to Colt McCoy. He was right there. And he's someone that's, you know, sometimes he telegraphs his passes. He, he tries to get it into that target a little bit too much instead of relying on his physical ability. But very intelligent. He's had some games where he's thrown a lot of interceptions. He's had some games where he's thrown a lot of touchdowns. He passes a lot in college. And he fits Andy Reid's system very, very well. This is a player that may have a shot sooner rather than later in a pass-happy offense. I like that pickup. In the fourth, they also got Clay Harbor, tight end fullback hybrid out of Missouri State, a player that I had a kind of a man crush on that I thought was a little bit underrated here coming out of a small school. He does everything well. He's a great HMAC, fits that system, can be the backup to Brent Selleck, can play fullback a little bit for you, can block pretty well. So he's a jack of all trades. That's a pretty good pass catcher. You develop him along, he could be a future uh, second tight end for this team. In the fifth, they got Ricky Sapp, defensive end from Clemson, a very small guy who his tape is, is up and down. You know, he has all the athletic ability. He gets into the backfield to sack the quarterback. He's a, a pass rusher first and foremost, won't do anything against the run, but sometimes we didn't see it. He had some injury issues. He got pushed around some games, so we'll see what happens with Ricky Sapp. But I like the chance in the fifth at getting a supreme pass rusher for your team. In the fifth, they also got Riley Cooper, wide receiver from Florida. I like Riley Cooper. He's a big guy, another guy that's been drafted by Major League Baseball, but is going to the NFL, and that's what he wants to play. Coming out of Florida, he made a lot of big plays. He doesn't have great speed, but he can get away from defenders pretty well. He's pretty physical, good hands, kind of does everything well. I think he's a good you know, slot wide receiver, maybe a number three guy. Maybe down the line, he can win that slot job. In the sixth, they got Charles Scott running back from LSU. It's a guy that the type of player the Eagles have been trying to get but have never been able to do it. Kind of your bigger, bulkier back that can run up the middle that Andy Reid just doesn't use. And they have Leonard Weaver. They have Mike Bell now. So I don't know how Charles Scott fits into this team or if he does. So he may not even make the team. Seventh, I got Jamar Chaney, linebacker. And I love Jamar Chaney. I think he has huge, huge upside. The injury issues are very, very present. But if he stays healthy, he has the full range of abilities. He's a guy that can go sideline to sideline. He's a guy that makes tackles. He can get into the backfield and pass rush. He can lay the lumber on you and punish you for going across the middle or running right at him. I think Jamar Chaney is a great pickup, and I think he can win a backup job in Stuart Bradley there in Philadelphia. Also in the seventh, I got Jeff Owens, defensive tackle from Georgia. Another guy that you saw him in the offseason in some of the All-Star games. He looked great, and he got into the backfield and beat some very good offensive lineman so I really like the Jeff Owens pick I think he's another someone another seventh round pick that can make this team the last pick was Kurt Coleman safety from Ohio State not sure if he makes the team more of a special teams player uh, kind of undersized doesn't quite have the speed you need for a starter or a player on the field so we'll see how that works out so overall I give him a B plus for the Eagles I think it was a good draft uh, I think I like them trading up for Brandon Graham I think in the third and fourth round they may be made some picks that were slight reaches but other than that, some great late round picks for the Eagles. And I think they're going to continue progressing as long as Kevin Cobb is good. So I like that draft. Uh, that, that's about all for me for the Eagles. Tomorrow, San Francisco 49ers.